believe it or not, I do kind of sort of take care of my knives. And Instagram bro, Steel Angel Gabriel, didn't quite believe that, and was like, hey, how about the video on the proper way to treat a knife? You know, I guess a video without all the dumb shit in it. Well, it is extremely hard for me to cut out all the dumb stuff, so sorry. Now, I'm not going to pretend I'm a knife care expert, but I generally follow rules on how I treat knives off camera. And even when I treat them on camera, I still follow some rules. So hopefully when someone posts a comment like this one from Name Redacted recently, or let's say, I don't know, this one from Don Sherman, which is a legitimate question for a person who doesn't watch the channel regularly. So from now on, I can just post a link to this video and either not feed the troll in the former case or in the latter comment, hey man, it's a joke, watch this video. So yeah, first up, batoning. You can treat your knives however you want. Knife makers often make dumb shit videos like I do, except in the case of Cold Steel, they're like, uh, these may void the warranty, so you may not want to try these. Yeah, okay. Batoning, as you know, is taking a hard piece of wood and beating on your knife to show another separate piece of wood who the man is now. Now, I've had to baton maybe three times in real life off camera. One was for a meat smoker that needed some smaller pieces of wood. Um, you know what? Maybe that's the only time. I generally recommend only using fixed blades for batoning, unless you're a shitty YouTube personality like me. Folding knives are not really meant for batoning, despite all the tactical bushcraft marketing bullshit manufacturers feed you. This is especially true of knives with titanium frame locks, because in the case of my Chris Reeve Sebenza 21, the repeated pummeling of the hard blade steel against the titanium frame lock from the spine wax deformed the softer titanium frame lock. Always assume a knife has a shitty weak lock if you want to be safe because it helps you to avoid damaging your knife. But towning wears on your lock, and in the case of me, sometimes it can break a blade if you repeatedly hit a knot, like on my Junglist 2. But towning is rarely necessary for keeping an already hot fire going. Just throw in the rot and soak the wood on the fire, and surprise, guess what, it burns. You're like, uh, what if the log is thick, what then? I don't know, use a wood splitter. Next up, things you cut with a knife. I abuse my knives on camera, but I am careful to only beat them against soft things. Soft plastic, wood, paper products, rope, generally soft plant-based materials and soft synthetic materials. The more you use your knife against metallic or ceramic or glass surfaces, the more likely you are to dull, chip, or edge roll. I generally am careful when using my expensive knives when I cut food on a glass or ceramic plate. Remember, ceramic is used to keep knives sharp because it is a harder material than knife steel. I know that sounds like a no-brainer, but I've seen plenty of people clink knives against plates and wonder why they're dull. I mean, if it's a $20 Gonzo, who gives a shit? You know what, and if it's a $425 Chris Reeve, who also gives a shit? The higher the number on the HRC hardness scale of your knife, the more likely it is to chip. The lower the number, generally, the more likely it is to edge roll or slightly become deformed. These are generalities and not absolutes, though. Now, regarding prying, don't do it unless you want to break your tip. You're like, what if I get uh, a tanto? Can I pry then? Sure, do whatever the hell you want. But don't complain when a knife breaks. There is no price point where knives cease to fail. You can have a weak piece of expensive wear-resistant steel, or a strong piece of really cheap steel. You have no way of knowing until after it happens. Next up, store your knives indoors and always put them away dry. High carbon steel blades like SC Fix blades use a high carbon steel, which is why they coat them because they rust in moisture and humidity. And you use them outdoors. Now my open all number eight is a high carbon blade and it does discolor after just a little bit of use, which is part of its charm. Now, if you hate this discoloration, buy a stainless steel, and always wipe them down after you're done, even if it is stainless. When I put my knives away, I make sure they're dry. Always. There are completely rust-free steels out there, but the word stainless does not mean rust-free. It needs to be a rust-free steel. It will rust. Some stainless steels rust faster than others. So I guess let's look at it this way. High carbon and carbon steels rust easiest, and within minutes, often. Stainless steel rusts sort of less, and some stainless steel compositions rust quicker than others. Some within minutes. Some need to be wet all day long or for days. Also, salt water rusts steel faster than fresh water. It is extremely hard to prevent a high carbon steel blade from discoloring or developing a patina over time. Okay, lubing your pivots. I am not a dude that disassembles and polishes and 
reassembles his knives for smoother action. I review knives as they come from the factory. But let's say a pivot. You know, the screw up front that the blade pivots on. Well, if it's creaky or gritty, you can lube it sometimes. You may want to take it apart and look and see what's making it gritty before you do that. But, um, yeah. Lubing blades with oil also helps to prevent rust. Watch a video on proper knife lubing for a real demonstration. I am an occasional luber. And unlike Pornhub, you won't get a good lube demonstration from this channel. I generally use 3-in-1 oil. There may be better lubes out there. So Google lubes, or I'm sorry, best knife lube, and figure it out yourself. Another tip, if you don't regularly disassemble knives and know what you're doing, don't start. Or start on a cheap knife. Many knives have great warranties that are voided by a dumbass taking apart a knife and not reassembling it correctly. Also, many knives have soft screws, even really expensive ones. Yeah, I'm talking to you, Spyderco. A $150 knife made in Taiwan with soft screws should be unacceptable in this day and age, but for some reason, we keep putting up with it. You can easily damage soft screws, especially if they have Loctite on them, just by turning them or, you know, looking at them wrong. So if you're worried about a knife failing or, you know, bring a backup or buy a fixed blade, if it begins not deploying correctly or locking correctly, send it to the manufacturer for warranty work. A lot of manufacturers have good lifetime warranties that cover most things except intentional abuse. Check their warranty before buying a knife if that's important to you. Sharpening. Get a sharpening system that maintains a consistent edge angle when sharpening. A Spyderco Sharp Maker is a basic version of this. It's what I use because I refuse to spend $500 on a high-end sharpening system. There are many sharpeners out there. I'm not saying to look at Spydercos. That's just what I use and I'm happy with it. If you've never sharpened a knife before, don't start by freehanding it. I also don't bother with those cheap V sharpeners that look like this that you get at Walmart. All right, Steel Angel Gabriel, hopefully this basic video answers some of your questions or, you know, about me. These are, of course, general rules I follow. Not all may work for you. There are better advice videos on the internet, so watch those instead. If you like this video, check out other videos by me that feature satire, useless tips, bad advice, and many ways to not treat a knife properly. If you want a serious knife video, I implore people like Name Redacted to not try and watch my videos seven to ten times because they don't get any better. And trolling masquerading as, quote, advice is still trolling. My mother told me one time from a very young age, if you don't have anything nice or constructive to say, don't say it. Now, of course, if someone does something ignorant or says something ignorant to you, unsolicited, feel free to shut them down. Shut them down. Shut them, shut them down. Okay, maybe that last bit of advice was from Chuck D. Thanks for watching.